The Great Wall is here. In Game of Thrones Season 7 premiere, the Stark sisters are back and out for blood. HTTPS colon slash slash CDN. Vox CDN. Com slash thumper slash supplic fmiakn bw2 qpq 16 sapa 3 m equals slash 0 by 0 colon 1440 by 8 10 slash 920 by 613 slash filters focal 666 by 207 colon 896 by 437, format web slash cdn, vox cdn. Com slash upload slash course underscore image slash image slash five five seven five one eight nine seven slash screen underscore shot underscore twenty seventeen underscore oh seven underscore seventeen underscore at underscore ten forty nine underscore am one billion five hundred million three hundred twenty three thousand one hundred twenty one PNG Spoilers ahead for Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 1 Inch. Game of Thrones Season 7 premiere has finally aired, and it picks up right where we left off, with a scene many fans have been hoping for, Arya exacting revenge for the murder of her mother, brother, and sister-in-law at the Red Wedding. The opening scene was equal parts shocking and satisfying. For a moment after the HBO logo flashed, the first scene was confusing, didn't Walter Frey get his throat cut in season 6? Is this a weird flashback to the moment before his death? Rather, that's Arya, using the magic assassin skills she's developed over the past few seasons to punish the Freys. It's been a long, frustrating journey to get here, but the payoff has finally come, as Arya seamlessly went from slitting Walder Frey's throat to impersonating him to kill his followers. From the start, Arya's character development has largely been about honing her skills as a killer in the face of personal family tragedies. After her sword fighting teacher from season 1 likely perished, or and maybe not. And her father, Ned Stark, was beheaded, Arya went to a dark, vulnerable place. She wandered from one makeshift bed to another. She was imprisoned by the Lannister army for a while. She was chivied around by Sander the Hound Clegane, as an unlikely travel companion. Her objective for much of season 2 and 3 was to reunite with her mother and brother, who had rallied a Stark army in the north, and she made it as far as the town they were visiting, just in time for their deaths. Then she spent two entire seasons in Bravos, attending a sketchy study abroad program at the House of Black and White, as a corpse washer, assassin trainee. There, she learned how to assume other people's faces. In a culmination of all her hard-won skills, Arya finally gets to cross names off her revenge list. For a while, that list just kept getting longer and longer. Now, we can count nearly all her living enemies on one hand. They still include the Mountain, the Red Woman, Cersei Lannister, two of the brothers without banners currently traveling with the Hound, and Owen Payne, the royal executioner who killed Arya's dad. Arya's last scene in Season 7. Episode 1 has her telling a bunch of Lannister soldiers that she's off to kill Queen Cersei. They laugh this off, but we know what Arya is capable of. Meanwhile, Arya's older sister, Sansa Stark, is on her own quest for payback. We saw her get some of her just deserts in the season 6 finale, when she sixed Ramsay Bolton's ravenous dogs on him. This season, she's off to a feisty start, challenging the opinions of her brother, well technically, cousin, Jon Snow, who was recently crowned king in the north, and driving back the advances of her once-savior Littlefinger. 
Sansa, who experienced the same familial losses as Arya, and was also raped and abused in a forced marriage to psychopath Ramsay Bolton, is in no brighter headspace than her serial killer sibling, Arya and she's also out for blood and power. There are several hints at what's to come for Sansa's personal character arc. For one thing, Sansa argues to punish the king of the Karstarks and other clans who betrayed the Starks by taking their familial lands. When Jon is unwilling, Sansa retorts, so there's no punishment for treason and no reward for loyalty. Her desire to settle debts speaks volumes about her possible future actions. Another major sign of where Sansa is going is the admiring way she speaks of Queen Cersei Lannister, who Moss murdered all her enemies last season. I learned a great deal from her, Sansa admits. That's a double take moment, given Cersei's violent mistakes, including inadvertently driving her son to suicide. Does Sansa really want someone like this as a role model? In the violent, abusive world of Game of Thrones. Sansa might feel that ravaging her enemies is her only path to freedom and safety. In the grand scheme of things, all the heartbreak of the earlier seasons might seem worth it in hindsight if Arya and Sansa can turn the tables on the show's less savory characters. But will they still be our favorite, lovable characters if they commit the same cruelties and atrocities as their enemies? At the beginning of Game of Thrones, the Starks represented all that was fair and just in Westeros, with Ned Stark handing out moral lessons about personal responsibility and duty. From the start, the show set up a dichotomy between the Starks and the more mercenary and expedient Lannisters. But as the seasons progress, the differences between the two is blurring. The likability of the Stark sisters only seems to rise with each cruelty that they commit. Arya is now a murderer, making her little different from other cruel killers on the show, except that her story is featured more prominently in the overall narrative. Sansa sits at the head of an army, staring angrily at Jon, exactly like Cersei trying to advise her father Tywin, and repeatedly getting shot down and put in her place. John and Sansa also suggest parallels to Stannis and Renly, the deceased Beretha and brothers. They never could see eye to eye, although neither was a real villain. So far, the likability of the Stark sisters only seems to rise with each cruelty that they commit, given their long struggle and the obstacles they faced. But they're walking a thin line between justified vengeance that feels satisfying and the brutal ruthlessness of the people they're fighting. The last chapter on the Stark sisters has yet to be revealed, but it's likely to be bloodstained and morally compromised.